Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE live, AWS reInvent 2022. This is our first day of three and a half days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage on theCUBE. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, it's getting louder and louder behind us. People are back, they're excited. You know what somebody told me today? Hmm. They said that less than 15% of the audience is developers. I'm like, no way, I don't believe it. But now maybe there's a redefinition of developers because it's all about the data, and it's all about the developers in my mind, and that'll never change. It is, and one of the <laughs> things we're going to be talking about is app modernization as customers really navigate the journey to do that so that they can be competitive and, and meet the demands of customers. We've got an alumni back with us to talk about that. Ajay Patel joins us, the SVP and GM Modern Apps and Management Business Group at VMware. Ajay, welcome back. Thank you. It's always great to be here, so thank you, David. Isn't see it you. great? It's great to be back in person. So the VMware Tanzu team here back at reInvent on the flow shore, flo flo <laughs> show floor, there we go. Talk about some of the things that you guys are doing together innovating with AWS. Yeah, so it's, it's great to be back after in person after multiple years, and the energy level continues to amaze me. Uh, the partnership with AWS started on the infrastructure side with VMware Cloud on AWS, and when, with Tanzu we're extending it to the application space. And the work here is really about how do you make developers productive? To your earlier point, it's all about developers, it's all about getting applications in production securely, safely, continuously. And Tanzu is all about making that bridge between great applications being built, getting them deployed and running, running and operating at scale. And EKS is a dominant Kubernetes platform. And so the better together story of Tanzu and EKS is a great one for us and we're excited to announce a set of innovations in that area. Well, Tanzu was so front and center at VMware Explore. I wasn't at, in, in at VMware Explore Europe, right. but I'm sure it was a similar kind of uh, focus. When are customers choosing Tanzu? Why are they choosing Tanzu? What's, what's, what's the update since uh, last August when we- yeah, You know what, uh, the market settled into three main use cases. One is all about developer productivity. Mm. You know, consistently, we're all dealing with skill set gap issues. How do we make every developer productive, modern developer? And so Tanzu is all about enabling that developer productivity and we can talk quite a bit about it. Second one is security is front and center. And security is being shifted left, right into how you build great software, how do you secure that through the entire supply chain process, and how do you run and operationalize security at runtime. So we're hearing consistently about making secure software supply chain a heart of what our solution is. And third one is, how do I run and operate the modern application at scale? across any Kubernetes, across any cloud. These are the three themes that are continuing to get resonance. And empowering all of this, which is exciting, David, is this formation of platform teams. I just finished a study with uh, Bain Consulting doing some research for me. 40% of our organization now have a, some form of a central team that's responsible for, for what we call platform engineering and building platforms to make developers productive. That is a big change since about two years ago even. So this is becoming mainstream and customers are really focusing on delivering value to making developers productive now. And the other nuance that I see, and you kind of see it here in the ecosystem, but when you talk about your customers with platform engineering, they're actually building, they're, they're pointing their business, taking a page out of AWS, pointing their businesses to their customers, right. becoming software companies, becoming cloud companies, and really generating new forms of revenue. You know, the interesting thing is some of my customers I would never have thought as leading edge are retailers. Yep. And not your typical Starbucks that you get a great example. I have an auto parts company that's completely modernizing how they deliver point of sale all the way to the supply chain. All built on Kubernetes at scale. You typically think of that a financial services or a telco leading the pack, but I'm seeing innovation in India, I'm seeing the innovation in EMEA coming out of there. Across the board, every industry is becoming a product company, a digital twin as we would call yeah. it and means they become software houses. Yeah. They behave more like you and I right. in this event versus it, a, a traditional enterprise. And right? they're building their own ecosystems and that Absolutely. ecosystem's generating data, that's generating more value yeah. and it's just the cycle. It's, it's, it's a flywheel. Amazing. It's a flywheel. So innovation continues to grow. Talk about really unlocking the developer experience and delivering to them what they need to modernize apps, to move as fast and quickly as they want to. So, you know, I think uh, AWS coined this word, undifferentiated heavy lifting. If you think of a typical developer today, how much effort does he have to put in before he can get a single line of code out in production? Mm -hmm. If you can take away all the complexity, typically security compliance is a big headache for them, right? The developer doesn't want to worry about that. Infrastructure provisioning, getting all the configurations right is a headache for them. Being able to understand what size of infrastructure or resource to use, 
cost effectively, how do you run it operationally? Because the application team is responsible for the operational cost of the product or service. So these are the un, you know, heavy lifting that developers want to get away from. So they want to write great code, build great experiences, and we've always talked about frameworks, a way to abstract away the complexity. And so for us, there's a massive opportunity to say, how do I simplify and take away all the heavy lifting to get an idea into production seamlessly, continuously, securely. Is that part of your partnership? Because you think about AWS, they're really not about frameworks. They're about primitives. I mean, Werner Vogels even talks about that in his, in his speech. You know, but, but that makes it more challenging for developers. You no, know, actually, if you look at some of their uh, initial investments around Proton and et cetera, work they're starting to do, they recognize, you know, PaaS is a bad word, yeah. but the outcomes the platform as a service offers is what everybody wants. I just talking to the AWS leader who's responsible for the area. He actually has a separate build team. He didn't know what to call the third team. He has a Kubernetes team, he has a serverless team, and has a build team. And that build team is everything above Kubernetes <laughs> to make the developer productive. Right. <laughs> and the ecosystem to bring together to make that happen. So I think AWS is recognizing that primitives are great for the elite developers, but if they want to get the mass scale and adoption in the business IT, if you will, they're going to have to provide richer set of building blocks and reduce the complexity. And partnership like ours make that a reality. And what I'm excited about is there's a clear gap here and Tanzu is the best platform to kind of fill that gap. Well, and I, I think that you know, they're going to double down, triple, I just wrote about this, double down, triple down on the primitives. Yes. They have to have the best you know, servers and storage and database. And I think the way they, they, I call it taping the seams, is with the ecosystem. Correct. You know, and nobody has a, a better ecosystem. I mean, you guys are you know, the, the postage child for the ecosystem, and now this even exceeds that. But partnering up, that's how they continue and to And they're innovate. looking for someone who's open, right? Yeah, yeah. And so one of the first questions is, you know, are you proprietary or open? Because one of the things they're fighting against is the lock-in. So they can find a friendly partner who is open source led, you know, upstream, committing to the code, delivering that innovation, and bring the ecosystem into a, a orchestrated choreography. Yeah. It's like singing a music, right? They're running, a, running an application delivery team is like running a, a musical orchestra. There's so many moving parts here. Right. How do you make them sing together? And so if Tanzu and our platform can help them sing and drive more of their services, it's only more valuable for them. And I think the partners would generally say, you know, AWS always talking about customer obsession, yep. it's like becomes this bromide, you go, yeah, yeah, but I actually think in the field, the, the sellers would say, yeah, we're going to do what the customer, if that means we're going to partner up. Yeah. And I think AWS's comp structure makes it sort of. I learned today how, how incentives with marketplaces work. Yeah, and this it's is powerful. It's very powerful, yeah. right? So you line up the sales incentive, you line up the customer and the benefits, you line up bringing the ecosystem to drive business results. And everybody. And so everybody wins, and yeah. which is what you're seeing here. <laughs> the excitement and the crowd is really, the whole, all boats are rising. Yeah, yeah, right. right? And it's driven by the fact that customers are getting true value out of it. Mm. Right? Oh, absolutely, tremendous value. Speaking of customers, give us an example of a customer story that you think really articulates the value of what Tanzi was delivering, especially making that developer experience far simpler. What are some of those big business outcomes that that delivers? You know, at uh, Explore, uh, we had uh, the CIO of CVS, and with their acquisition of Aetna and CVS Health, they're transforming the, the, the health industry. And they talked about the whole COVID and then how they had to deliver the number of uh, you know, vaccines to you and I, and how quickly they had to deliver on that. It talked about Tanzu and how they leverage the Tanzu platform to get those new applications out and start to build that. And Roshan was basically talking about his number one priority is how does he get his developers more productive? Number two priority, how does he make sure the apps are secure? Number three priority, how does he do it cost effectively? In a world particularly where we're heading towards where you know, the budgets are going to get tighter. So how do I move more dollars to innovation while I continue to drive more efficiency in my platform? And so the cloud is the future. How does he make the best use of the cloud, both for his developers and his operations team? Right? What's happening in serverless? I in 2017, Andy Jassy was on the Cube. He said if AWS or if Amazon had to build all over again, they would build and in, in, was using serverless. And that was a big quote. We've mined that for years. And as you were talking about developer productivity, I started writing down all the things developers have to do. Yep. With it, they got to they got to build a container image. I said they got to deploy an EC2 instance. They got to allocate memory. They got to fence off the apps in a virtual machine. They got to run the, you know, compute against the app. Of course, they got to pay for all that. So, right. okay, what's your story on? Or what's the market asking for in terms of serverless? Because there's still some people who want control over the runtime. Help us sift through that. And you know, it really comes back to the application uh, pattern or the type you're running. 
if it's a stateless application that you need to spin up and spin down, serverless is awesome. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to worry about scaling it up and up? I want to set up some SLAs, SLIs, service level objectives or, or, or indicators, and then let the system bring the resources I need as I need them. That's a perfect example for serverless, right? On the other hand, if you have a, a more of a workflow type application, there's a sequence, there's state. Try building an application using serverless where you have to maintain state between two, two steps in the process. Not so much fun, right? So I don't think serverless is the answer for everything, but many use cases, the scale to zero is a tremendous benefit. Mm. Uh, events happen, you want to process something, work is done, you quietly go away. I don't want to shut down the server, start it up. I want that to happen magically. So I think there's a role of serverless, so I believe Kubernetes and serverless are the new runtime platform. It's not one or the other, it's about marrying that around the application patterns. I developers shouldn't care about it, that's an infrastructure concern. Let me just run an application, let the infrastructure manage the operations of it, whether it's serverless, whether it's Kubernetes clusters, whether it's orchestration, that's details, right? I, I, I shouldn't worry about it, right? So we shouldn't think of those as separate architectures, we should think of it as the an continuum. architecture that... The continuum in some ways yeah. of different application workload types. And, and that's a toolkit that the operator has at his disposal to configure and saying, where does should that application run? Mm -hmm. Should I want control? You can run it on a, in a Kubernetes cluster. Can I just run it on a serverless infrastructure and, and leave it to the cloud provider to do it all for me? Sure. What, what was PaaS? PaaS was exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Write the code once, you do the rest. Yeah, yeah okay. So they're just elements of that. And then Knative is kind of in the middle, right? Knative is just a technology that's starting to build that capability out in a mm -hmm. standards way to make serverless available consistently across all clouds. So I'm mm -hmm. not building to a, a Lambda or a particular you know, technology type. I'm building it in a standard way, in a standard programming model, and the infrastructure just works for me. On any cloud, on, on any cloud. The whole idea of portability, consistency, yeah, yeah. right? Powerful, yep. What are some of the things that, that folks can expect to learn from VMware Tenzu and AWS this week at the show? Yeah, so there's some really great announcements. First of all, we're excited to extend our, our partnership with AWS in the area of EKS. Uh, what I mean by that is we traditionally we would manage an EKS cluster, you have visibility of what's running in there, but we weren't able to manage the lifecycle. Uh, with this announcement, we can give you full management of lifecycle of EKS workloads. I have customers that have 400 plus EKS clusters, multiple teams sharing those in a multi-tenanted way with common policy and they want to manage the full life cycle, including all the upstream open source component that make up Kubernetes. People think Kubernetes is the one thing. It's really a collection of a lot of open source packages. Mm. We are making it simple to manage it consistently from a single place. On the security front, we're now making tangible service mesh available in the marketplace. And if you look at what service mesh is, it's an overlay, it's an abstraction. I can create an idea of a global namespace that cuts across multiple VPCs. I'm, I'm hearing at Amazon's going to make some announcements around VPC and how they stitch VPCs together. It's all moving towards this idea of abstractions. I can set policy at a logical level. I don't have to worry about data security and the communication between services. These are the things we're now enabling, which are really an and to make EKS even more productive, making enterprise grade, enterprise ready. And so a lot of excitement from the EKS development teams as well to partner closely with us to make this an end-to-end -end solution for our customers. Yeah, so I mean, it's under Jassy, it was really driving those primitives and helping developers. Under Solipsky, it's solution. continuing that path, but also recognizing the need for solutions, and that's where the ecosystem comes in. Right. Yeah. And the question is, what is that box, as you said last time, right? For the super cloud, there yeah. is a cloud infrastructure which is becoming the new palette. Well, but how do you make sense of the 300 plus primitives? How do you bring them together? What are the best practices patterns? How do I manage it when something goes wrong? These are real problems that we're looking to solve. And for. if you're going to have deeper business integration with the cloud and technology in general, you have to have that abstraction. You know, one of the simple questions I ask is, how do you know you're getting value from your cloud investment? That's a very hard question. What's your trade-off between performance and cost? Do you know where your security, when a log4j happens, do you know all the open source packages you need to patch? These are very simple questions, but imagine today having to do that when you, everybody's doing it in a bespoke manner using the set of primitives. You need a platform. The industry has shown at scale you have to start standardizing and building a consistent way of delivering and abstracting stuff. And that's where we're the next stage of the cloud journey. And, and with the economic environment, I think people are also saying, okay, how do we get more? We're, exactly. we're in the cloud. Now how do we get more? How the do we optimize value out of the that? Cloud. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Right. How do we transform the business? Last question, Ajay, for you is, if you had a bumper sticker and you're going to put it on your fancy car, what would it say about VMware Tanzu and AWS? Mm, I would say Tanzu accelerates apps. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you so much for joining As us. Always, we appreciate it. As always, great to be here. Pleasure. Likewise.
For our guest, I'm Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in emerging and enterprise tech coverage. Thank you.